The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Unmuted. Okay, hello, 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 everyone. And so the first thing I want to tell you is that we have a chat box. I want you to find the chat box because this is going to be an interactive seminar. So some of you already know me and been with me already, so you have the chat box. Hi, Aaron, Jose, Leah, Ron, Ahmed, Anthony, Carmela, hi. So we have lots of people today, and you need to be on the chat box because otherwise you're just listening. Okay. Hi, Kapil. Hi, Karen. Vikram. Arjuna, hello, hello. Rebecca, hi. Eva, Margaret, Regina, hi. Every hello. Okay, Margot. Wow, Margot. So nice to see you. Wow. Great to see you here. Kapil, hi. In India. What's the time in India, Kapil? Margot, I'm missing you. Kapil, what's the time in India? For, I'm in South Africa. The time is 1 a.m. 4.30, whoa, Kapil, amazing. Vikram, wow. Margot, I'm sure we'll meet soon. Oscar, good morning, hello. Okay. Okay, good, let's start. Let's start. Let's start with some agreements, okay? So, as I said, this is going to be an interactive seminar. So the first thing I want to do with you is a few agreements. And the very important agreement is that nothing I say today is true. Nothing I say today is true, unless, of course, it is true for you. So you need to look and to see, does, does what I say make sense to you? If it makes sense to you, perfect. If not, put it in the bin. But you need to look and make your decision not based on what you already know, but based on observing in a new unit of time and figuring out, does it make sense to me? So that's the first uh, agreement. Next, nothing I teach you is new. You already know it. Now, the, one of the definition of the word spirit is this thing that knows. And I want to explain to you why I say that. Let's say this is your body and this is you. And let's say that this is your mind, okay? When you hear something, let's say I told you something. I say something to you. What you do, you take what you heard or you've seen, you have seen, you compare it to the pictures in your mind and you come back and you tell me yes or no which mean that before I told you, you knew. This is really important to understand that you know, actually you will discover that you are perfect and anything that is not perfect is not you. If you want to know if it is you or not, check how perfect it is. You will see that when you're doing something bad, when things are not, not going as you want, later on you say, it was not me. When you do something that is not right, you, you, you sit down and you say, I don't know what I, why I did it. It's not me. Because you are perfect and anything that is not perfect is not you. This is really important datum to have. So nothing I teach you is new. You already know it. 
what I teach you, what I teach you is not just theories, it's proven facts, but they need to be implemented in an exact manner and that different to what you used to. So everything I'm telling you and people that have been with me can tell you everything I'm going to tell you, or almost everything, will be the opposite of what you think. But not just different, the opposite. And you need to look and see, does it make sense to you? Does it work? Does it bring result? If yes, take it, use it. If not, throw it away. Okay. How, how many of you have been with me and got a truth that are totally different than what you thought? Just write in the chat. Vikram, yes. Candice, me, yes. Aaron, yeah, everyone. <laughs> okay, good. Very good. Regina, every. So it's very, very, very different. But because it's different, it doesn't mean that it's not true or, or it does not work. It just means have a look. Have a look again because if you will see, you, you, you can actually observe and see that 99% of the people, 99% of the people fail 99% of the time. Is that true for you? Did you see that? Most of the people don't make it. They cannot pay the bills. They don't have enough money. They are worried. They are afraid. They are in, in problems, yes? So it makes sense to you. Good. Excellent. Which means that what they do, wh wh why they're in this situation? They're in this situation because some of the actions are incorrect. So if I say this is the result, uh, this result is the result of some kind of series of actions, yes? And those actions are obviously incorrect because they don't get the expected result. Which means that if you will go and just look at what everyone believes in and do the opposite, you have 99% chance of succeeding. Just do the opposite of everyone. Really, this is quite fascinating. So the fact that I'm going to tell you things that are different do not mean that they are not true. They, are, they mean that probably they are true, but no one wants you to know it. Okay, next. It is the ability to confront the drills, not just the listening that will produce the expected result. I will ask you questions. I will give you drills. I will get, ask you to do things. And if you will do them, you'll get the benefits. If not, 10% of what you could get. Because listening means nothing. It is only if you can do that you actually, that actually means that you have it. So I'm not looking for someone that can repeat what I said. I'm looking for you to look at this data and be able to implement it. If you can implement it, it's worth something for you. If you just know it as knowledge or as data, it's useless or almost useless. So it is the ability to confront the drills. And here is your first drill. What I want you to do, I want you to take, when I say start, when I say start, I want you to take a deep breath in, just inhale for as long as you can, but I want you to check how many seconds you can do that. So let's say you can, you, when I say start, you will, you will check on your watch and you, or phone and tell me how many seconds you can and write on the chat. Okay, start. That's for me, 12 seconds. Write how many seconds you can do that. Six seconds, Leah. 16, Aaron, wow, nine, Anita, good, Karen. Westin, nine, Kapil, nine, wow, that's good. Karen, 16, wow. That's a lot. Carmela, 60 seconds. Wow, wow. Shona, nine. Wow. Carmela, wow. Lake, 12. Amazing. That's a lot. Rebecca, six. Margo, nine. Very nice. Very nice. Ro what? Ron, 30. Wow. Dave, 12. Regina, 12. Anthony, 20. Wow, that's a lot. Oscar, five. Vikram, 45. Amazing. Okay, so why did I ask you, Greg, 16, wow, Pat, 31, very nice, very nice. Why did I ask you to, to do this exercise? I uh, ask you to do this exercise because I want you to realize that you cannot just inhale. As good as you are, 
after 10, 9, 12, 50, 30, 60 seconds, you will have to exhale. Now, when you listen to me, you are inhaling data. If you are not part of the chat, if you're just sitting and listening, you'll get shocked by too much data. You'll get what I call data poisoning. You have to exhale. You have to exhale. You cannot just sit and listen. You have to be part of the, of the uh, seminar to be part of the discussion. And that's why I make those seminars interactive because otherwise you're just sitting there totally affect and I'm impressing you. I'm not trying to impress you. I'm trying to get you to actually take the data and use it. And the only way to do that is if you inhale and exhale. So do we have an agreement that you will participate? Yes, Candice, yes, 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 Gilly, Oscar, yes, yes, very good. Excellent, amazing, Ron, Arjuna, West India. Wow, that's excellent, I mean, excellent, excellent, Regina, Alan, excellent. Thank you very much. Good, so basically what I'm saying to you, you need your acknowledgement. You need to acknowledge because the moment that you acknowledge, you actually excel and you help yourself and you help me. Now, the most, most, most important thing is in life is that things must be fun. There is a law that I have that says that happiness is prerequisite for success. You cannot be successful and unhappy. If you want to be happy, if you want to be successful, you need to be happy. So happiness is prerequisite for success. So whatever you do, you need to make it fun. And here we go. You're about to start on the road to discovering the secrets of this universe, how it really works. And it is not what you think. Welcome to the fear to freedom. Unleashing your ability to have the purpose of this series of webinars. This is going to be a series of webinars. The purpose is to fix your ability to have. If you have something or you don't have something, it is because you have the ability to have it. You can, you see that some people, I can give them a, a car or a computer or something. And after a week or a month or two months, the thing is, is, is broken, is destroyed, is dirty, is useless. And some people, you can give them the worst thing and they will somehow make it beautiful and they will prolong it, the, its life. And, and it just seems to that people have some influence over the physical universe. Those people that have positive influence over the physical universe can have and so money and things come to them. And those people that cannot have a good influence over the physical universe, money run away from them. I don't know if you know, but money has an emotion. Money has emotion. And the emotion of the person that deals with the money will define if you will have money. Money has an emotion and your emotion will define Will that money will come to you or not? For example, if you take um, a person that, um, let's say he's angry, you will see that he will surround himself. People who are angry and uh, people uh, in that area who, or who are afraid will come to him because there's an emotion and there's an attraction between, between this uh, wavelength. Money has an emotion. And if you will be in the right emotion, money will come to you. And I will teach you exactly how and how to create it. Drill. Write down how many hours you work per day. How many hours you work per day? Just write in the chat. How many hours you work per day? Average. 14. Wow. 5. That's amazing. 12 hours. 8 to 10. 12. 0. Wow. Rebecca. 8. 12, 10, interesting, very big spread. 8, 12, 10 hours become Oscar, 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. Dahlia, 8, okay, wow. Shamaya, 10, Dave, 12. Margaret, 3, around the clock, <laughs> good, Carmela. 
I need the six. Okay, excellent. That's very good. Now, write what your gross income was in the last, in the past three months. You don't need to write it on the chat. Write it for yourself. Just have a look and write what was your gross income. How much money you made in the past three months? Just tell me once you have it. Just say yes or something or done so I know that you have it. Got it. Got it. Excellent. Excellent. Very good. Yes. Very good. Yep. Perfect. Now, right next to it, what would you like your gross income to be in the next three months? Just put down what would you like it to be? Okay. Done. Yes. Thank you. Shona. Perfect. I like that. Aaron, Ron, Anthony, Kapil, Oscar, Shania. Very good. Karen, Karen Mullen. Okay. Very good. Dave, Anita, Eva. Perfect. Pat. Good. Now, write down how much more income you could generate if you had four extra free hours per day. If you could have four extra free hours per day, how much income you could generate? How much, how much more income would you have? At least 30% more, yes. I would probably dub, uh, double it, I guess, good. Joyce, 10,000, Margaret, okay, double. Okay, good. Unlimited Carmela, okay, wow. Double Karen, okay, very good. Double. Depends uh, what I do with those hours, Ron. Yes. Vikram, 50%. Lots more. Yes. 10 times. Anthony, 40%. Okay, good. Now, write down what, you'd, what would you do if you had all the money you would like to have in the next three months. If you all of a sudden just have a lot of money coming to you, as much as you want. Okay, what would you do if you had a lot of money? Head of debt, yes. Get out of debt, okay. What would you do if you had all the money? Reinvest into my business, okay, nice. Start to help others, Oscar, very nice. I love it. Repair the house, Margaret. Helps lots of people, Kapil, yes. Hide it, Aaron, okay. Invest in a business to, of my, wow, nice. Leave the job and buy cottage, yes. Hire staff, wow. Okay. Pay off cards, travel, yes. Pay debt. Contribute to help others, nice. Foundation for homeless, Joyce, very nice. Shona Bitcoin, share the, uh, share the wealth, like, wow. Live big, uh, Banks, okay, wealth, develop uh, the business I haven't had time to do yet. Ron, very nice, great, big gain, bigger gain, Carmela. Uh, Dahlia, new car, travel, help my family, good. Okay, pay that, pay for my children, wow. Very good, activism, nice. Live more free, invest in uh, real estate, give back. I love it. Very, very nice. New games. I have personal trainer. Wow. It's really investing more, uh, investing more women owned businesses. Wow. Nice, Margot. Really nice. You'll see that everyone wants to help here. This is really beautiful. Build a hospital. Arjuna, good. Invest in others. Wow. Wow. This is really fascinating, very amazing group. Everyone wants to help you. So I want to ask you a question and I need you to look and answer honestly. I want you to answer honestly. It's really important that you'll answer honestly. Why don't you have that extra time and money? What's the problem? Why don't you have some, this extra time and money? You are able, you're powerful, you, you know, you, you have everything going for you. You study. Why? I didn't create it yet. Why? 
uh, I lost my job in health issue, okay. Lack of certainty, habits, yes. I do uh, have it, but I don't use it, yes. I was unable to sell, okay, Ahmed. Uh, personal limitation, yes. Considerations. My 12 hour shift, yes. Fear, wow. Poor relationship with money, yes, check. Too many considerations. That is why I'm here, Dave. I've not been able to overcome myself. That's very smart. Probably, Dave, that's really a very good answer. Probably because of uh, not being able to handle my consideration, Kapil, not having enough fun. Ah, wow, creating more joy, yes, Rebecca. Um, I follow what uh, my family wanted to do and did not uh, pursue my dreams. Wow, wow, wow. Rebecca, that's amazing because I can't have it, Gilly, smart, not focused enough, not organized. I did not know uh, that I don't know, okay, Eva, lack of discipline, organization, not taking the best decisions, okay, not using my time wisely, excellent, okay. I want to tell you something that you will not like, okay? I want to tell you something that you will not like, but before that I will explain something so you will not leave the webinar immediately, because this answer is not something that you're going to like. Okay. Um, if this is a problem, if this is a problem, if, if you try to handle the problem with something that's called an excuse, the only way for you to know if you're handling the problem with an excuse or with the real reason for the problem is the only, only, only way for you to know if you are doing, dealing with the real reason or with an, ex an excuse is the following. Once you have the real reason, the problem is not a problem anymore. Not in your mind. I'll give an example. Um, once you have the real reason for, let's say the, there, was, there was a cure for, um, for AIDS. Once there is a cure for AIDS, they have the real reason for the problem, they found the cure. At that moment, AIDS is not a problem anymore. Uh, the car is not starting. Once you find the real reason why it's not starting, you can fix it. It's not a problem anymore. So far, so good. Everyone agree with that? Once you have the real problem, the real reason for the problem, the problem is not a problem. It might be a barrier, but it's not a problem. Okay? So what I want to tell you is that all the reasons, all the reasons that you wrote that you don't have more time and more money are not the real reasons. You're dealing with excuses. Because otherwise your problem will not be a problem. You will not consider it as an issue. Does it make sense to you? Yeah? It's not nice to hear, but it's true. Actually, you will see, actually you will see that when you use an excuse, when you use an excuse, the problem grows. And when you use the real reason, the problem disappeared. Good, Dalia. Okay. So the first thing I want to tell you is that you don't have the extra time and money you have. You don't solve the problem you want because you don't have the real reason for the problem. The real reason is hidden from you. And this is something very fascinating. The law could be that if you try to solve a problem, if, if you try to solve a problem and the problem is not solved, you're trying to solve the wrong problem. If you try to solve a problem and the problem is not solved, you're trying to solve the wrong problem. Using an excuse, you use excuses because you're solving the wrong problem. Jose, wow. Yes, I know. <laughs> 
Okay, does it make sense to you? When you try to solve a problem and the problem do not get solved, you're trying to solve the wrong problem. This is really very fascinating, amazing. But you are in love with your problems. You are in love with your problems because it is your problem. How do I know it? If I will give your problem to someone else, if you, if you have a problem and I give exactly the same problem to another person, I take exactly, this, this is your problem, yes? This is your problem. But I give it to someone else. He has exactly the same problem as you. If he will ask you how to handle it, you'll give him the perfect advice how to handle it, but you will not be able to give it to yourself. Which means you know. Which means you love your problems. You keep it alive. Okay. A problem, this is really fascinating. A problem, the definition of a problem is two opposing intentions. I, I want to have money and the physical universe say no money for you. This is a problem, yes? So a problem is a problem only as long as two, two sides are 100% sure that they are right. But if I will delete my side, if I will stop pushing, you understand that this thing cannot have any force on me. If you take uh, two people uh, and one, uh, two hands, uh, and two hands, one push against each other, you know, two people pushing their hands against each other. This is, uh, uh, maybe I will draw it like that. Uh, this is uh, one arm, and this is another arm, and the two guys are pushing against each other. This pushing against each other, this uh, point where the, uh, where the pushing against each other, this is the problem. When one side stops pushing, the other side cannot generate any, other, any force. Which means you create your own problems by pushing, by actually continually making it, putting it there. Does it make sense to you? Yeah, does it make sense? Okay, good. Good, very good. Excellent. So the fact that you have a problem, you have a problem because you love it, because you're continuously creating it. And what we're starting to do now, I'm going to start teaching you how to handle problems and how to actually find the real reason for the problems and so on and so on. The truth is that you may accept but uh, not really agree with is you are way too slow. Your problem is that you're too slow. You think that you're busy, you think you don't have time, you think that uh, you're tired, you think uh, that you don't have energy, you think that you're afraid, you think all of those things, it's all, 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 all nonsense. It's just manifestation of the real problem. The real problem is you are too slow. You're just too slow. Now, why is it a problem? Because Money is a form of energy, or it can be in some way defined a form of energy. It's not 100% correct, but it's a form of energy. And you will see that energy, what define how much force and energy have. So let me explain what is uh, energy and what is force. Um, so let's say this is something like that. Okay, and you have here a box or 100 kilos sitting there, okay? This thing, as long as it's sitting here at the top, it's a potential, okay? It has a potential energy, it's called the potential. The moment that you start to drop it, what you get is released energy. So what you get is a release energy, the action of falling bring about a release energy, and when that will get to a stationary uh, surface that it cannot move, what you will get here at the impact point is force. 
okay now you'll, you'll understand that when this thing has a specific mass the, the moving down is constant okay it's more or less constant assuming that there's no resistance no nothing stopping it so the only way to increase the force and by that the power actually as well is to increase the speed somehow you need to give it a, some kind of increase of speed and the more speed you have the more force you generate so when you cannot generate force you will not release enough energy you will not get money you want to get money you need to get much more energy how you do that by increasing speed the only way for you to get more energy is by increasing speed if you are tired the only way for you to get energy is to start moving most people think that if they're tired they, they need to rest no if you are tired you need to move if you don't have enough money is because you're not moving enough if you're not successful enough is because you're not moving enough you're not going you're not showing up you are not doing what needs to be done you are too slow does it make sense to you? You want to know, you look at the person, I go into the office and I do 57,000 things by the time I open the door. Someone that works for me, by the end of the day, did not complete one item. Too slow. You get the idea? So you want to know how much money a person has. He has as much money as he can tolerate motion as he can actually move as much money as fast as he is will define how much money he has you can be a very very talented musician but if you are slow if it takes you 70 years to write one song you will not have money so the speed the speed of execution the speed how much you move is everything you will see that people now when i'm talking about moving most people think about moving as motion. Moving is not motion. Two different things. When, when you actually create speed, you see that the highest speed that you can create, let, let's say that you have a specific potential here. The highest speed that you can create is by, create, by going into a straight line. Okay? Does it make sense to you? But most people, good, most people will not go straight. They will go, they will say, okay, I'm going to the internet to look for some data. But then they will see an advertising. So they will see the advertising. And on the way to seeing the advertising, they will not finish to read it. Someone will post something on Instagram, so they need to see. It. And then something else happened. And then something else happened. And then something else happened. They move but they don't generate speed. The speed as far as moving from point A to point B is very slow. It takes them forever to arrive. So your problem is you are too slow, not because you're not moving fast, but because you are not moving from point A to point B directly. Exactly. Does it make sense to you? So if you want to improve your life right now, the first thing you should do is eliminate those things, those disturbance. It's, it's really insane that you do that because imagine that you go, you, you, are, you are here and you are on the way to save a, a person from drowning. Someone told you, you know, your job is to save that person from drowning. This person is your son and you are on the way to save him from drowning. If you will not get there in time, he will die. You have five minutes. And while you, you started to go, you started to go and all of a sudden, after 10 seconds of moving, there is a dog that barking here. And you forget about your son and you go to handle the dog that's barking. It will be insane, no? That's what you do all day long. That's what you do all day long. There are different dogs that are barking 
and you handle the dogs and you forget about your children, the drowning. So you don't bring enough money to your family, you don't bring enough money for yourself, you are not successful. Does it make sense to you? Good. This is really important to understand. Your problem is you're too slow and you're too slow, not because you're not running fast. <laughs> you're too slow because you're not running towards where you want to get. Like if you need to go from point A, this is uh, New York and you need to go to, I don't know, uh, some other place in New York. If you drive from one place to another, from point A to point B, you, you'll be at the, and, and assuming your speed, your speed is a constant, you cannot change your speed, you will get at X minutes, let's say 10 minutes. But if you'll go from here to here to here to here, you'll get after 10 years if you will get there. So you're slow. That's what happened in your life. You don't go from point A to point B. Why do you need to be fast? Why do you need? This is wow. Yes, Dahlia. Yes. Yes. This is, by the way, apply to anything. Uh, you want to educate your children. You want to educate your children to be in, to behave in a certain way. Okay. And to be good citizens and to be successful, etc. So you start to go that way. And then they do something that you don't like you got to handle that and you forgot totally that your purpose is to make them a good citizen. So now your purpose becomes to make them wrong or to fix them or to show them what's wrong or whatever. Destruction, yes, destruction. So that's the first thing. We need to understand why it happened. And before you understand why it happened and how to handle it, you're wasting your time even trying. So that's the first thing. So why do you need to be fast? Speed and speed alone determine how powerful you are. You will be as powerful as you will increase the speed. You can increase your speed either by eating spinach and running faster, but there is a limit to it in the physical universe. The best way to increase your speed is to shorten the distance. The best way to increase your speed is to shorten the distance. And what do I mean to shorten the distance? To go in a straight line. If you do only that, because everyone else going in zigzag, if you do only that, you'll be the most powerful person on earth. You are as powerful as you are not distracted. I don't know if uh, you have, if some of you flying a lot, but you can see that uh, when you fly, uh, usually there was no internet. Now it's they messed it up, but there's internet. Uh, but usually when there was no internet, you could open your laptop and work and you could do 100 times more in a two-hour flight than what you've done in eight hours a day in, a, in the office because there's no distractions. It's really fascinating. Now, to increase power, you need to increase your speed. The only, there's only two ways to increase your speed. Number one is by uh, eating spinach or somehow getting more energy. Or number two, is to shorten the, the distance. So how do you do that? How do you increase your speed? How do you do that? Let's have a look at this drill. How does one solve any problem? How do you solve any problem? How do you solve any problem? When you have problems, how do you solve any problem? Find the real why, yes. Call me, Monica, the queen, yes. Ask the right question, Shona, yes. Wine, yes, <laughs> yes. How do you, how do, how does one solve any problem? What's the common denominator to solving any problem? You look, identify the problem, and list the possible solution. Rebecca, very good. Uh, get faster, Anthony. Uh, Shona, yes. Communication, Anthony, it's true. Take responsibility is very true. Uh, by looking at the uh, problems, trying to create a solution for handling it. Very good. Stop creating the problem. Leah, very good. <laughs> mutual ground. Yes. Wow, Westing, mutual ground. Uh, desire. Yes. Know what your goal is. Excellent. Pat, make sure you are 
solving the right thing. Pet, very, very good. Dalia, look at the, and find the real problem. That's true. Decide. Look outside your own vision, babe, that's nice. Have a burning desire to solve it, yes. Understand the problem and produce a solution. That's really powerful, yet. Stand up to you for your rights, Shona, yes. How will you define the word problem? How will you define the word problem? How will you define the word problem? If we want to solve a problem, let's know what we're going to solve, yes? So how will you define the word problem? Obstacle. Obstacle is a synonym. I'm looking for a definition. It's a good synonym, but I'm looking for a definition. Something blocking you to get where you want to get. Oscar, very good. Distraction. It's a synonym. I'm looking for a definition, but it's again, it's good, Dave. Force counter, force Ahmed. That's very good. Something which I don't want in my life, but is there. Kapil, very good. Uh, Jean-Claude, look at your goal. Yes. Something that stops you from doing what you want. Every nice. Something preventing desired result. Ron, perfect. Two opposing intention. Uh, Eva, you've been you're paying attention. Two opposite intentions, Jose. Very good. Excellent. So let's have a look. A problem can be defined as anything that poses a different intention to yours. If I want to have money and the physical universe says no, then you have a problem. If, uh, if I want uh, to, to move from point A to point B and the car says I'm not starting, you have a problem. If I want to run the body and the body says I have a pain, you have a problem. Anything that has a di different intention than yours. Number two, any result that is different than the result you expected. Every time you don't have the result you expected, what you get is a problem. Okay, by the way, the word fake reality, or the, the, there's a word that I'm using that uh, called fake reality. And fake reality means a piece of information that you're 100% sure that is fully 100% correct, but when you use it, it does not bring the expected result. Fake reality, a piece of information that you're 100% sure is correct, but when you use it, it does not bring the, affected, the, the expected result. Every time you have a problem, you are using fake reality. You're using a piece of information that you are sure is correct, but you don't have the expected results, which means there was some kind of a counter intention to you. Does it make sense to you? Yes, yes, yes. Very good. Excellent. Yes. Very good. Excellent. Now, how will you define the word responsibility? How will you define the word responsibility? How will you define the word responsibility? Responding. Okay. That may be a synonym, but I'm looking for a definition. How will you define the word responsibility? You see, I'm looking for a definition, not for a synonym, because if someone tell me that responsibility is chaka chuka, I still don't understand what chaka chuka is. I need a definition. Willingness and ability to be at cause. Robert, that's really good. Ownership of a response. That's very good. That's really good. Ownership of response. What you accept that is uh, in your control. Good. Agreed set task. Wow, nice. Ownership of what I created and carry. That's nice, Pat. You are coordinated with Shona. Ability to execute on a solution. Susan, very nice. Rebecca, agreeing that you are the cause. Nice. A connecting intention and result. Dave, very insightful. That's nice. Connecting intention and result. I love it. Holding in the caring or control for a thing or a person or place. Wow. Respond to an ability. Good. Dalia, ability to not have problem. Wow. Dalia, wow. Ability to not have problem. That's really interesting. 
Uh, do what you have to get result in what you are doing. Wow, Joyce, knowing uh, that my action created my result, every good. Uh, Sherry being the other viewpoint. Wow, 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 Sherry being the other viewpoint. Nice, very, very, very nice. Okay, let me give you another definition. By the way, what you've said, the fact that I'm going to give you another definition does not mean that your definition is not correct. I'm just giving you another viewpoint. It's just another viewpoint. It's not that my viewpoint is correct and yours is not. It's just another viewpoint. Okay, I'm just letting you look from a different angle. Able and willing to determine the result on all viewpoints. Able and willing to determine the result on all viewpoints. What do I mean? Uh, the first thing I want you to look at is if I look at life as many, many, many viewpoints. There are many people and each one of those lines is a viewpoint, a viewpoint. There are seven or eight billion viewpoints. And when you take one viewpoint, when you say, mm, I have my opinion and you have your viewpoint, let's say you said, this is my viewpoint. At that moment, you make yourself right and you make seven billion 999999999 viewpoints incorrect. Which means you say, I'm responsible only for that and all the rest, it's not me. All the other people has nothing to do with me. What I'm telling you that actually to be responsible is to be able to, be able and willing to determine the result on all viewpoints. Why? Because at the lowest level, if I look at responsibility as a scale, where at the top I have a responsible and at the bottom I have not responsible, I can say that when you are responsible, you are cause. And when you are not responsible, you are an effect. Okay? Now, the lowest, lowest, low, the most affecting in the universe, the thing that is in the lowest, lowest level of responsibility could be the physical universe. You know, if you go to a piece of wood and you tell the piece of wood, how do you feel? The piece of wood do not answer. It's dead. It's total effect. You can only hit the piece of wood, use the piece of wood, but the piece of wood will never wake up in the morning and say, well, I want something because it's totally irresponsible. If you will blame your car for the accident, you will see that it's quite insane. It's totally irresponsible because the car is a dead thing and it's total effect. Does it make sense to you? That's the lowest level of responsibility. Okay? Does it make sense to you? Lowest level of responsibility is the physical universe. You're being an effect. Just a little bit higher, just a little bit higher, what you have here is something fascinating. Here, the high, higher level of responsibility, what you have here is called the problem. Problem is very, 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 very low level of responsibility. It's not the lowest because you still assert something. You still say I'm right, where at effect you don't even say I'm right. So a problem is... Force counter force. You say I'm right, and something else say I'm not. Force counter force. And what you have is a problem. It's a low level responsibility, but it is somehow responsible. The moment that you take responsibility, some level of responsibility, which means either you stop pushing or you overwhelm the other person. So you have two options. Either you stop pushing, and it's not a problem anymore. You don't want it. Let's say a, a, a guy come and say, mommy, I want ice cream, I want ice cream, I want ice cream. He has a problem because mommy say no. The moment that he say, you know what, I don't want ice cream. It's not a problem anymore for the child. So that's one option. Or the other option is to overcome, to overwhelm the opposition. He convinced his mother to give him the ice cream. There's no problem anymore. So that's the two options. So for as long as you're in a problem, you have very low responsibility, but once you stop pushing or you overwhelm, 
you went actually one level up, you are here, and here you have personal decision or personal causation. Okay? So you, as a person, cause things and you know. You cause things. It's what you do. You say, what I did, it's me. So you say, I hit you, it's me. I had an accident, I don't blame the car, I blame myself. But, but, if someone hitting me, I don't say it's me because it's him. I can prove that it's him. So when you have personal causation, it's a, it's a position where you say, I know. I'm willing to take responsibility to what I created, but not what other people created. So I'm willing to take responsibility if I broke the door, but if the door just fell down, it's not me. At the highest responsibility, when you are here, you are actually willing to take possession over all life. Anything that happened to you and anything that you are caused, you consider it's you. Now, there are some areas in your life that you are here. There are some areas in your life that you are here. Some areas in your life you are here and some you are here. Areas in your life that you are here give you no problem. This is where things go well. Your hand probably is in that area. And for as long as you don't have pain, etc., etc., it's in that area. You are willing to take full responsibility for it. Whatever you've done with the hand and anything that has been done to your hand, it's you and you keeping your hand in good condition. As you start to go down, the lower you go down, the bigger your problems. So your problem is as big as you are not willing to, def to say that it's you. Your problem is as big as you shunning responsibility, as you saying, it's not me, it's someone else's fault. When you find fault with someone else, your problems start to grow. The first time you started to have a problem is when you started to blame someone for your condition. Does it make sense to you? Good. Very good. Story of my life, yes. Unfortunately, yes. Good, Rebecca. Okay. Rebecca, you will see that there is a way not to push and not to back down, but to win. Totally, Dahlia. Very good. Excellent. Yes, Susan. Powerful. Good. So, once you understand that, you can understand that when you are able and willing to determine the result on all viewpoint, basically what you are, you are at the top. You are able and willing to determine the result. You say, I determine the result on my viewpoint, on the other person's viewpoint, on the physical universe, on my life, on my family, on groups. I define the result. The result is me. When you are here, when you are here, you are winning. As long as you start to deteriorate on that scale, you are failing. You are failing to the degree that you are not willing to say it's you. Because you think that to be right is more important than to be successful. What you do here at those level, you can say that this is a scale of how right you are where here you are really right, at the bottom, you are really, really right, but dead. And at the top, you are willing to be right or wrong at the same level of enthusiasm. You don't care if you're right or wrong. Where here you are 50% right, 50% wrong. So responsibility is really a scale of right and wrong. Where at the bottom you are right, you are trying to be right, which means everyone else is wrong. And as you go up, you get to personal causation where you are 50% right, 50% wrong. And when you get to the top, 
you are willing to be right and wrong at the same level of enthusiasm. You don't care. And before you get here, you are not going to be successful. You're not going to have what you want to have. Wow, I've heard you said this so many times and it just hit me so hard why my project haven't been working out. Wow, well, well, amazing. Wow, there's, there is really no reason to argue at all. Exactly. Nice. Karen, thank you. Yeah, this is really fascinating. This is really unbelievable. If you check your life, if you're willing to look, if you are not trying to be right, you're willing to look, you'll see the more right you are, the worse you get. Right, but dead. Jack, eye-opening, yes. Jose, wow, yes. So the whole idea behind the, the fear to freedom is to get you to stop being right and start having fun. Because you cannot be right and have fun. Because when you are right and you make everyone else wrong, it's very boring to play alone. Oscar fun was the false data, yes. I've been the face, but I feel good. Yes, interesting, Westin, yes. This is amazing, Oscar. Yes, I agree. It is amazing. So the conclusion, being too serious is not fun. That's true, every. Uh, Rebecca, I'm uh, relating this to when I heard my sister say something that proved me right on how she felt, but uh, when I stepped Stop saying I was right and starting taking her truth and responsibility, thing changed with her. Very amazing. This is really amazing. Okay, the conclusion is that the problem is a condition of reduced responsibility. A problem is a condition of reduced responsibility. The only reason you have a problem is because you are not responsible. This is awesome. Stop being right. Yes, Joyce. Yes, Margaret. Oscar, wow. So a problem is a condition of reduced responsibility. Thank you, Jose. Kapil, wow, yes. Yes, that's resonant, yes. Okay. If you did not determine a result, it is a proof you dropped your responsibility for it. If the result was not determined by you, if you did not say there are going to be 100 people in this webinar, if you didn't say that, you're not responsible. If you didn't say and actually caused it to happen, yes? So you, if you did not determine the, a result, it is a proof. You dropped your responsibility for it. And the problem is that people say, yes, 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 I'm responsible. And then someone hitting them and they say, but he hit me. Because they're mixing between responsibility, which is one thing, and fault. It's not the same thing. Responsibility is one thing, fault is another thing. So if someone shoot me, he may be at fault. But I'm responsible because I end up with a dead body. Rebecca, thank you. Such a powerful perspective on the word responsibility, Pat. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, drill. List five problems you have in life. Any five problems. Just take a piece of paper or a piece of phone or a piece of screen and list five problems you have in life. And tell me when you have it. When you have five problems, any problems, it can be less if you want, three, two, whatever. Done, Karen. Check, good. Candy's got it. Shona, done. This t shirt, yes. Carmela got it. Monica, yes. <clears throat> Ron, perfect. Sher Sher Sherry. Pat. Jean-Claude, Oscar, Kapil, Greg, Frank, Avery, uh, Joyce, Anita, very good. Jose, Karen, excellent. Now I want you to pick the first one 
and write, I want you to pick the first one and write what you can do about it. How can you be more responsible? What you can do about it, not what someone else can do. What can you do about it? Just say, with just anything, just increase your responsibility a little bit. So I want you, you have a problem, you're somewhere here, yes? You're somewhere on that scale. I want you to move a little bit up. Just if you move a little bit out, you, up, you'll see that your life will change and improve. So write what you can do about it. Done, excellent. How difficult is it? Easy, no? Done. Not easy, yes. Now, did you notice that if you just take the problem, write it down, by writing it down, you say, okay, I'm responsible for that problem. And then you say, I can do something about it. You for sure say I'm responsible for that problem. Super easy, yes. Opposing solutions, okay. This process, but will be done. Good about. I know I can, but actually doing it is a problem. That's why you need the fear to freedom. Gilly, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Just by having writing what you can do about it, you will see it will be solved. That is so easy, yes. Okay, so your homework is to do the same with the rest of the problems that you wrote. Now, to solve any problem, we need to find the true cause or the true source or the true reason for the problem, the thing that keeps the problem alive. Now, you have to understand that if you have a problem, you keep it alive. How can I prove it? How can I prove it that you keep it alive? And this is really fascinating. Uh, if this is you, okay? This is you. Thank you, Aaron. This is you. And let's say that you have a headache, okay? You have a terrible headache, okay? I say, you create that headache, and I can prove that you create that headache. Why? Because if all of a sudden, let, let's say you are in a car and you're driving and there's a headache, and while the, and your husband is driving this car, okay, and you're in this car and you have a headache and it's terrible and you cannot stand it and it's the worst thing that happened to you since the beginning of the of days, and you are driving in this car and it's really bad. Now, all of a sudden, your husband fell asleep and the car is going towards a tree. And in these few seconds, the headache goes away and you are handling the car, you're taking hold of the steering wheel and you're moving the car and, da -da 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 and for a few seconds, anything between 1 and 10, 15, 30 seconds, you don't have headache. Which means that when you have headache, you created it. Because when you took your attention off the headache into the car, it goes away. Which means you create the problem. Did you notice that you have the same problem and one day you feel terrible about it and one day you feel, ah, it's okay, you, you forget about it? It means the problem do not create the feeling. You create the problem, you create the feeling. You create it. So a problem is something that you actively create and because you create it, you cannot create future. So you can either create problems, which is something that happened in the past. Problems is always something in the past, is not in the future. So you can either create problems or you can create future. You cannot create both. Simple and powerful. Wow, I'm laughing at myself so much right now. This is so powerful. Thank you. Liat, ha, so, so fun to understand it. Good. Eva, wow. 
My mom said, uh, Anita, that she didn't want to come to the seminar because she think you would tell her, uh, her she was making all her problem. Wow, didn't want to hear this. Wow, Anita, say that to your mom that she's smart. Why problem is always the past? Okay, I'll explain. Rebecca, wow, yes. Look, um, let me introduce you to some concept that some of the students already know, but I will explain to you. Uh, let's say that this is uh, time, okay? This is time, and time goes to the right. It goes, time started at one point, yes? It seems time have to start at one point, and it goes from this beginning point into what's look like infinity. So far, everyone agree? Good. Excellent. And you will see that as time goes by, there's more and more and more facts that are being added. More and more and more facts. All kind of facts. All kind of facts. And those facts are uh, coming from different people, different viewpoints. And at one point, you look at something. Okay? You look at something, and you look at something that is here. And in order for it to be here, it needs to have force and counterforce. It cannot be zero time. It must have something that happened in the past versus something that happened in, in the past, a little bit less in the past, because there's no now. Because if you say now, by the time you say now, it's, it's gone, yes? So because of that, you will see the time is always, always, and that problem is always something that happened in the past. In present time, you can create only beauty. Because if you actually look at something, if you actually look at something, how it is, it will stop being a problem. You just looked at the problem in the drill that we've done a second ago and you already solved it, yes? So for a problem to be a problem, it must be in the past. The past contain problems, the future, contain no problem. And there is no present time for you because present time, because in, in this physical universe, when you say now, it's not now because now is past already. So in the physical universe, there is no present time. There is only past or future. Do you agree with that? There is no now, of course. You understand? Because when you say now, it's already past. When you say now, between the moment that you say now until you realize that you say now, blah, 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 it's already past. So in any given moment, you can have only past or future. Future is always amazing, beautiful. This is future. If you see something that looks bad, you're dealing with the past. If you say it's going to be bad, you're dealing with the past. You're looking at your past because when you're born, when you really create future without looking at your past, when you just start, you don't say it's going to be bad. Everything is beautiful. Rain going down, it's the best thing in the universe. You fall in, the, in, the, in, in the mud and you think it's the best thing that ever happened to you. In the future, my parents will be uh, impelled and this will create problem for me so it is not future. It's not future because if they will be there, I'm not, I'm not sure what you say, it will be bad, PLD, probably dead or something, yes? Odd, okay. It's not, it's not a problem, it's normal. If they will not get old and they will stay young forever, there will be no process of improvement for the body. So actually, if you will not have passed of, or someone told you that is bad, or you lost a body, or something like that, you will see that if you wouldn't have that past, the fact that they will get old, it's a normal thing. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. 
If they will not get old, it will be a problem. Imagine that they are 20 years old and they're telling you what to do when you're 40. <laughs> Understand? You will see that if it's not nice, it's the past. It's not a problem for me. It's not a problem. Unless you make it a problem. It's a problem if you make it a problem. They're all, they're all good. Wonderful. Why is it a problem? Where is the counter intention? This is why having fun is important because it is present time. Okay. When you're having fun, it means that you're creating future. It's a problem only if you say that it's a problem. Did, did you see some people that look at the situation and say, whoa, this is really a problem? You know, the, the market, let, let me give you an example. In the US, the, the, mar the market crashed and they had this subprime crash. And every single investor and every single person that was in the business was in a massive depression and they lost money and it was bad and it was bad and it was bad. And I look at that and I say, whoa, this is beautiful. It was the best time of my life. I created so much fun, you cannot even imagine. I couldn't count the money that came in. It was so fast. Exactly. So it's only the viewpoint. It's only a viewpoint. If you decide, if you decide that it's fun, it's fun. If you decide that it's not, it's not. Fun is the manifestation of being unserious. It is being so, uh, so agile that nothing can hit you. The less serious you are, the more fun you have. Yes, Shana. So, so if something, if something is a problem for you, if you know it or not, it's only because of your experience. If you take a child, if you take a child, he just born, he's two days old, and you tell him, you know, your parents will get old, he will not care because he does not have past. He's not, it's not a problem for him. The moment that you installed enough past for him, you will see that he will have a problem. Now, what's the, what's, the definition, what's the definition of the word insanity? Every time I, 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 I'm like that, I'm uh, reprimanded. So taking responsibilities, it's not taking the reprimanding uh, to art and uh, continuing to, on my part. No, so basically if someone reprimand you, it's just trying to make you wrong. It has nothing to do with anything true or real. Okay, how would you define insanity? How would you define the word insanity? Attention stuck in the past, Jose, very good. How would you define the word insanity? How would you define the word insanity? Anthony, yes, very good. Attention stuck in the past. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results, yes. Doing the same thing over and over and not, with no result, okay. Good. So I'm sorry to I'm sorry to give you some bad news. So doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different result is actually tenacity. It's actually tenacity. Okay? Inability to differentiate is being illogical. It's a manifestation of insanity. It's not insanity. Insanity actually is attention stuck in the past. The more you think your past is important, the more you'll be worried, the less you will do, the less you will move, the more you will handle dogs, the slower you'll become, the useless you'll become, and you can be, and you will not understand what happened to you, but nothing will improve in your life. Nothing will improve in your life. The more you rely on the past, the less fun it is. The indication that you are relying on, on your past is 
It's not fun. That's your, that's your indication. It's not fun. Something here is not responsible. You are actually insane to that degree. Dahlia, so true. Does it make sense to you guys? Does it make sense? Yes, Shona. Yes, Oscar, Anthony, Agra. Completely. Yes, it does. 100%. Good. As I told you, what I'm going to tell you is not something that it's the opposite of what everyone thinks. But if you look at that, you'll see that it makes sense. If you look at that, you'll see that it makes sense. So to solve any problem, we need to find the true cause or true source uh, or the true reason for the problem, the thing that keeps the problem alive. Okay. Once you have the true source for the problem, you gain an ability to solve the problem. Once you have the true source of the problem, you gain an ability to solve the problem. As long as you don't have the true source of the problem, you will intensify the problem and create new problems. So the point is, if you didn't find the source of the problem, it's not that, okay, fine, I have a problem. You will create more problems. If you don't understand the problem with your children, there will be more problem with your children. If you don't understand the problem in your job, there will be more problem in your job. If you don't understand the problem that you have with money, you will have more problems with money. If you don't understand the source of the problem with your body, you will have more problems with your body. You need to gain the ability to spot the source of problems if you are to live with any level of fun. Otherwise, you will not have time, you will not have fun, you will, you will be right and you will be miserable. Does it make sense to you? Seems to be problem creator, but I want to be problem solver. Okay, every. How can I know the source? That's what I'm going to teach you. The source of the problem is us. Uh, it's good, but how can it run? It's true and it's good, but it doesn't help me to solve it. Yes. I need something like an actual tool that will tell me good. This is how you solve all problems. Full stop. Okay. A solved problem is a problem that ceases to exist. When you solve a problem, when you solve a problem, uh, let's say you have here a, a, a wall that's about to fall. Okay, so it's in an angle. If you put something to support the wall, it's not a solved problem. This is a handling, but the problem is not solved. Because now this thing at one point will become weak. And now no one will be there to hold it and it will fall and create even more problem. Yes, so a solved problem is no wall. When you have a solved problem, you have no wall, not a wall that I'm holding. Okay, so you really have to understand that what I'm going for is not to have walls with some kind of support, but no walls for you. So a solved problem is a problem that ceases to exist. So to solve any problem, you need to answer the question, what is the true source of this problem? You have to be able to answer that question. So here's the question. And so the obvious question is, how does one isolate the source of any problem? How do you find the source of any problem? What do you need to do to find the source of any problem? What do you need? Write about it, okay. Look at there uh, how you how look at go to the point of creation. How every that is a great question, Dave. Yes. I am the source of my problem. Rebecca, that's wonderful true statement, but does it help you to solve the problems that you have? Find the polarity. What does it mean, Shona? I don't know how, yes. Look to see where you are not having fun. Yes, so you will see I'm not having fun here. I don't have fun at my job. Okay, so how do I find the source? It doesn't solve me the problem. 
uh, marry the dark and light. Marry the dark and light. How does it solve my problem? I don't have money. How does marrying dark and light solve my problem? I'm talking about like practically what am I going to do to solve tomorrow to have a million dollars in my bank? Find the tipping point. What do you mean find the tipping point? How do I find the tipping point? The negative and the positive. Yes, but how, how does it help me to make a million dollars tomorrow in my bank? You need certainty, trust with yourself. Okay. Then the problem solved. Okay, good. So, so let's take an example. Let's take an example that I want. My problem is I don't have a million dollars in the bank. Let's say that that's my problem. And now I do all the marrying in the problem, all the negative and positive, and still there will be no million dollars in the bank. I didn't solve anything. It's good theoretically, maybe, yes, but I'm looking for, I'm Jewish, I'm looking for something practical. I want to count the money. Look at the past and try to see when it started. Okay, you will get just lies from the past. Marrying, make it natural. Okay, but let's say I, I, I'll marry anyone you want. Bring me a million dollars. How do I have a million dollars by marrying? You understand? I'm looking for something not just statements, not, not just nice saying something that someone said. What is natural? How, how can something be natural in the physical universe? There's no such thing. There's no such thing as natural in the physical universe. In the physical universe, everything changes. There's not one thing that is natural. If you show me one thing that is natural, you'll get from me a million dollars and I'm good for it. I have to take responsibility. I'm a... Uh, uh, in discipline and do not have self-control. Okay. You don't need a million dollars. Okay, but let's say that I want. This is my problem. Let's say that I'm considering it as a problem. Understand the reason why we are the source of the problem. Okay. Don't know. That's a good answer. Um, yes. Look at where you have been critical. Okay, so let's say I've looked at, I've been critical at this area. So, are you short too? I like short Jewish men. <laughs> okay. What you have been close to? Okay, well, so. Good, Rebecca. Grow better trees. <laughs> okay. Isolate the business model. Okay, so. You understand? I'm looking for a principle that will solve any problem. I'm looking for something that will find the source, that I will isolate the source of any problem. The minute a reason or a because come up, stop chasing it because it will distract us from seeing what is the real cause. Okay. Fully communicate with the problem without the need to be right about something. Okay, that's true. How, how do I, how do you do that? Like, what is it? Because if you can fully communicate with something, you will solve it. But how, what, what is the source of any problem? What is the source of the problem? Why I cannot communicate with it then? Natural, 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 I, the natural can be one of two things. Or neutral can be one of two things. It means no plus, no minus, an exact equilibrium. There is no such thing in this universe. From one place to another, an exact equilibrium. Two things that equal, totally equal, nothing, in, op in opposing, yes? To create an exact equilibrium. Or nothingness. There is no nothingness in this universe. And that's why there is no such thing as neutral. I can do something about it and, and the problem improve, okay? So why do we have still problems if we can do something about it and the problem improve? I'm looking for something that will be basic, that if you will know that, you will, any area that you will handle with this, you will have the real source of the problem. And at that moment, there will be no problem. Abandon using the past, that's good. How? Pray, that's really good. Uh, abandon you uh, hire a hacker to put money in my account that I like the way you think where did the 
where did you drop responsibility? Very good. Operating under misinformation. That's really good. Treat it as it is not a problem. Excellent. Okay. No communication. Yes. Okay. So obviously, obviously, when there's one question and many, 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 many answers, either they're all wrong or at least 99% of them are wrong. Okay? So if you have a one question and 20 answers, at least 19 are wrong or all the 20 are wrong. Okay? And since you cannot play with your life on a maybe, what we want, we want a handling that will be 100%, that will be totally 100% accurate, that you will know for sure that is the answer and there is no other answer. Okay? So this is what we want. We want handling. I will soon give you a way to solve any problem. It is going to be in a series of webinars uh, locating for you the source of your problems. And if you stay all the way to the end of the webinars, you will get a very special present from me that will show you the, uh, the key principles I have used to bring about my success to solve my problems. But first, but first, who is Mayor Ezra? Who is me? Because you're listening to me and many of you, uh, may, some of you met me, but you don't know who I am and why even I'm giving you this advice. So what I suggest that we will do is the following. We are almost an hour and a half into the lesson, into this first lesson. Before I will tell you who I am, and before we'll, uh, Gilly, thank you, <laughs> thank you. And before we'll give you everything that uh, you need to know in order to improve, what I suggest is the following. We will going to end this lesson because you got enough information for one and a half hours. Who, who got some things that was like wow for him so far? Who got some wow? Wow, yes, Rebecca, me, Monica, me, very good, Anthony, excellent. Good. Me, me, Monique, uh, Leah, yes, Oscar, Karen, Gilly, Shona, wow, Rebecca, excellent. Of a wall, I don't want to hand it up with like a solution. Yes. Wow. Super wow, Kapil. Very nice. Rick, you know, yeah, very excellent. Excellent. Dahlia, me, very good. Excellent. Good. So what we're going to do, what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a part two of this uh, introductory webinar. This is just an introduction. I didn't start the webinars that I'm going to teach you. This is not, it's here not really to teach you, but I'm, I'm doing that in order to sell you the thing that will teach you. But we are just at the beginning. We didn't get to where I wanted to get because I wanted to give you the basics. I want you to really understand the basics. <laughs> Gilly, I love you. Uh, so the next seminar, I will uh, promote the next seminar. Uh, probably from tomorrow, I will start to promote the next uh, uh, webinar. And I'm going to, um, to get you to be on that uh, next webinar. And in this webinar, we will get to more data and I will explain to you all about the series of uh, uh, seminars that I'm going to give you and how you will find the... <laughs> Dalia, you have to continue, yes. And how you can find the solution to any problems and why you don't see the solution so easily and why you drop in your responsibility despite the fact that you want to be responsible and why you're doing things that you know are wrong for you and for those people that you love, but you still do them. All of these things will be in the next webinar. In the meanwhile, if you feel that you got um, any kind of benefit from this webinar, I would really appreciate if you can go to Facebook, write a success story. So in the next webinar, we'll have even more people. So that's all for tonight or for today. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for everyone that promoted the webinar. Thank you for um, Candice and Regan that helping with the administration of the webinar. Uh, and thank you for participating in the chat. Um, I really, really, really enjoyed delivering to you. 
I'll see you next time, probably in a day or two or three. I will let you know. Uh, the Zaka family, I love you, love you, love you. And thank you for everyone. And I love you. And I will see you in the next webinar. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye.